Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Stay tuned, I'm gonna show you how to put in a knit neckband. They're easy peasy. Hi, this is Kim from Dorothy's Daughter. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to all my new subscribers. I had an uptick this week again of subscribers and I'm just grateful to have all of you. And uh, please reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, my email address is down in the description and you can also join our Facebook group on Dorothy's Daughter Community on Facebook. All right, so today we're gonna talk about knit necklines. I don't, I don't know any other process that seems to make people afraid, that seems to hold people up on knits. So we're going to tackle this today and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the steps I go through to make a knit neckline. It's easy. Is there math? Only if the pattern designer didn't do it properly. Yes, there could be, but, or if you lose the pattern piece, but it's just simple as multiplying a number times 0.8. That's it. That's all there is to it, okay? The crux of sewing knits is knowing when to stretch, when not to stretch, and use a stitch that stretches with it. If you do those three things, you have knits licked in a heartbeat, okay? And that's exactly what you need to do when it comes to the knit necklines. So this is the one that I'm sewing in the demonstration I'm about to show you. And as you can see, it lays nice and flat, no puckers at all can see across okay. here. So this is my neckline and what I did was I did this on the sewing machine rather than the serger. Nowadays I simply do them on my serger but I had a lot of practice before I did them on a serger. So I would propose if you're new at this to do it on the sewing machine. You'll have a lot more control and it's a lot easier to rip out if you make a mistake. So um, you're not cutting any fabric as you go and those kind of things. So I just think it's a better idea starting out to just start right on the sewing machine. So yeah. I'm going to show you that process in a moment, but let's talk about how long your neckline should be. So you're going to take the circumference of your neckline. And this is what the pattern designers do. Some of them may use 0.75, some may use 0.85, you know, they're, it's the gamut. Every co pattern company is different. But what I use if I don't have a pattern piece, sometimes you lost the pattern piece, or sometimes you just want to put a neckband in a tried and true pattern, so what I've done a couple times when I thought a, a neckline was a little bit too low for me, I've gone ahead and added a neckband to sort of bring that in. Um, and you can do that as well uh, without any problem at all. So basically you need this neckband to be slightly smaller than the neckline because if you did that it would just stand up straight. It would look like a 60s uh, little Chanel collar. You don't want that so what you're going to do is you're going to do 0.8 or 80% of this measurement all the way around here. And that's really all the math that there is involved in having a decent neckline. So, so now I'm gonna to go to the video where I show you how I apply a knit neckband. Okay, so I have my neckline prepared, my shoulder seams are done, and I've prepared my neckband. And what I've done is just sewn the seam and then uh, pressed it, folded it over, all right, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this into fourths. Now you can use clips or pins, it doesn't matter. Um, but first you want to find the back, which I usually put the seam at the very center back. And then what you want to do is you want to fold it in half and find the center front. And here's the center front. Then what you want to do is you want to bring those two pins together and then you have the sides. Here's one side. And here's the other side. So I've basically divided this neckband into four equal parts, back, front, and two sides. I'm going to lay that aside for a minute. I'm going to do the same thing with our neckband. So what I usually do is fold it here at the shoulder seams to find my center back and center front. 
All right, here's my center back. I'm going to mark that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I marked my center back. See, these are the shoulder seams, and I just folded them in half to find the center. And now I'm going to do the same thing here and find my center front. Line these up. Here's my center front. These really are not a big mystery. They're, they're easy peasy once you do a few and get them under your belt. Okay, now here's the tricky part. It's not really tricky, but if you're expecting the shoulder seams to be the sides, then you would be wrong. <laughs> and that I did that for a long time before I realized why they were always puckered. And that was why, because I was expecting those shoulder seams to be in between and they're not. So you go ahead and you bring those two pins together and then you find the two sides just like you did on the neckband. And what you're gonna find is it's down on the front. You don't do that, you don't drop your pins. <laughs> what you're gonna find is it's down on the front just a little bit. but it definitely is not at the shoulder seam, unless you have a neckline that is the same in the front as the back. All right, I'm gonna do this side now, bringing those two pins, the front and back together, kind of lay it out so that it's equal, 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 and find that other point. Okay. Now sometimes when it's a big neckline like this and you haven't done this a lot, you might want to go ahead then and find the point between each of the two points so that you're actually divide, dividing it into eighths instead of quarters. And if you're just starting out, I'd suggest going ahead and doing this. Um, it does help quite a bit. I'm going to go between these two. So I'm dividing it into eight equal parts now. And don't go by the shoulder seams at all. They don't matter in this at all, other than you're going to sew over them. <laughs> all right. Point in between these two. one more between these two. So now I've divided the neckline into eight equal parts, which I don't usually do, but if you're beginning this process, I would say go ahead and do this. It'll make your life a lot easier. So now I'm going to take this neckband that we divided into fourths, and I'm going to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and find the eighths. So bring those two together. Mark that, and I'm going to bring these two together. So I'm just doing the same with the neckband, marking the eighths instead of quarters. I think you'll find that you'll get good at this, and you won't even have to do it anymore. But you know, when you're starting out, sometimes things take a lot of practice. The other thing I'd say is, you know. For a while, do them on the sewing machine. You'll do them on the serger eventually, if you have a serger. But doing them on the sewing machine, at least first, before you serge, um, you just have a little more control. And I don't know why I keep picking up that bent pin. <laughs> there we go. So now I have the neckline divided, the neckband divided into eighths, and the neckline divided into eighths. So I'm going to find that center back which is, sometimes I have to hold them up. The center back is this pin here. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the center back, pin it together. Now here you can clip if you want to. This is a nice place to use clips if you have them. Take the pins out and put a clip there. All right. And then I'm going to go to the next point here. Sometimes I'll just pull back on the pin long enough to get the clip on and then pull the pin out. Okay. And the next one is going to be here. There we 
go. We'll be here. You want to be sure too that you're not twisting anything because um, that will definitely take up slack and make it not be correct. This one, I think I'm at the center front now. And this one. this one. Oops, I have one more. And this one. I need one more clip because I dropped one. So I have everything divided into eighths and I have clipped them all where they need to be. Okay, so now when you're stretching, when you're sewing, you just have this little bit to do at a time and it, I think you'll find it. The process will go a lot easier for you. Now we're going to go to the sewing machine. So I'm using a narrow zigzag stitch. Um, it's a width of about 0.5 and um, 210 or uh, 2.10 or anything. Um, you get closer to three, it'll be maybe a little bit too loose, but you can even make it a little bit looser if that, I think I will about 2.4 for me. Okay, now I start at the back. So I find that center back, which is easy because that's where the seam is. And then that helps you when you're getting dressed if you don't put a label in there. <laughs> then you know. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that underneath. This is the center back. I'm going to put my needle in. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use my hump jumper uh, to get it started. Because um, for whatever reason, this knit likes to get eaten by machines. Okay, so you're going to stretch the band but not the neckline, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna gently straighten out the neckline and stretch the band to go with it. And when it curves, the band should curve, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and start. The one I'm doing requires a quarter inch seam allowance. I love this sewing machine, but it's noisy sometimes. Okay. That would probably be my only comment to Janome on this S7 is that it is a bit noisy. All right, you see I'm just gently making the neckline go flat and then I'm going to stretch this band to go with it. So I'm stretching the band, but I'm not stretching the neckline. If you stretch the neckline, that's when it's going to pucker on you. Make sure you see the curves because they can be hard to miss or hard to see sometimes. And then what happens is you end up with a thinner neck band there than you wanted to have. Okay, holding, straightening out the the neckline, but not, but stretching the neck band. Started to curl on me, so I'm just gonna lift up my presser foot and make sure it's down. Okay. That's what you have to do when things curl. You just have to make a correction sometimes in the way that you're going. Just like you have to make a correction in the wheel of a car, right? 
Sometimes you have to make a driving direction. It's knowing when to stretch, when not to stretch, and using a stitch that stretches with it. That is the key to knits. So make sure that you're only stretching the band and that Also, when you get good at this with practice, you'll do it with a serger if you have one. But I'm doing it on a sewing machine today because I think that starting out, the best thing for you to do is to do this on a sewing machine. If you have to, slow your stitches. Most sewing machines will have a speed dial on them. And if you do have a speed dial, dial it down and go really slow if you need to. It's fine. Slow and steady goes the race. Right here, I'm going very slow. And if you need to do that to make it work, then that's what you need to do. Okay? I'm going to go a little faster than that so you don't get completely bored with this video. Alright, when you get up close to the next one, just take the clip and move it out of the way. You get up to your finger and then you kind of readjust. You straighten out the neckline and you're going to stretch this band accordingly. Do you have to fiddle? Yes. But once you've done a ton of these, it's not going to even be an issue for you anymore. It's my favorite finish to a neckline ever because it's quick now for me. And um, once you can do it with no issues, I'm sure it's going to be your favorite too because it looks nice and it is very easy to do when you um, get a little practice. Last eighth here. And usually if you're not, if it's not going well, it's usually something really simple that you haven't done. So, you know, don't give up. Okay. I'm going to take this back over to the ironing board. We have a really nice looking neckband with no puckering. Of course, you know, we're going to press, there's going to be a little bit here and there. We're going to press that out and top stitch it. It's going to look all really nice and neat. So if you think there looks like there's a little bit of puckering, probably once you, you know, once you uh, iron it, it probably won't be. It's kind of normal to have a little bit. Here's the back, just so you can see how that's not really, not really puckered either. All right. And now the extra steps that I did, one was to do the um, eighths instead of quarters and to sew it on the sewing machine instead of the serger or in addition to. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to my serger and go ahead and, and serge this seam as well. But um, for the purposes of getting you guys, um, showing you how to do it with control. Um, I went ahead and did it on the sewing machine. All right, that's it. Please subscribe.